All right, uh, good evening, mathematicians. Um, in this video, I'm going to walk you through your Unit 2 test review, um, Unit 2 in Math 8, that, that is. Uh, so looking for Pythagoras, um, I'm going to go through pages 102 and 103, which is your study guide. All right, um, so I guess let's just go ahead and dive right in. So question number one says, draw line segments to connect K, L, and M to form a closed figure. So first of all, we should follow the directions, right? And connect the dots so that we, we create some sort of closed figure here. And it looks like I have myself a nice parallelogram. All right, now it says, for question A, it says to find the length of segment KL. And that is this segment right here. Now we have two ways of doing this. One, you draw a square and then find the area of the square, then take the square root, uh, which, is per which is a perfectly good strategy. But another strategy that we just talked about was the Pythagorean theorem. So we could also create a right triangle uh, where KL is the hypotenuse, right? So this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Now you'll notice that the hi that drawing the right triangle is a little faster than doing the <clears throat> doing the uh, the square. So I think for A I'm going to do the right triangle, and then for B I'm going to go ahead and do the square. I'm going to try to do the square if I can. Yeah, no, I should be able to. Okay, awesome. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's work in purple here. So creating my right triangle, it looks like that leg is two units, and this leg is one, two, three, four units. Okay, so here's A, here's B, and then of course my hypotenuse is C. So I'm doing my work for A here. Uh, so I need 2 squared plus 4 squared is equal to C squared. And then we're going to simplify a little bit. 4 plus 16 is 20, and 20 is equal to c squared. And in order to take, in order to find the length of the hypotenuse, we are going to take the square root. So c is equal to the square root of 20. And when you arrive at your answer, the last thing you need to ask yourself is, can I simplify? Well, can I simplify this? Let's take a look. I can split this into the square root of 4 times 5. I know the square root of and then I can split this into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and therefore I get 2 rad 5 as my final answer. So the, uh, the length of segment KL is the 2 times the square root of 5 units. All right. I'm going to work in blue for, uh, no, I'm going to work in pink for this segment LM. So drawing my line here. Now, some of you guys are still struggling with the slope and using it to create the square. Um, so here I'm going to I'm going to use the square method for the uh, for the segment ln. Of course, the right triangle method will also work here as well. But I think it's important that I kind of review both in case you guys uh, would like to use it. Okay. So when we were creating our squares. What was important was we found the slope of the line, right? We needed to find the slope of this line, of uh, the line that we're looking, looking at for this segment. And really, the best the best strategy that I can tell you guys is, uh, imagine that this is on this is on a graph, right? And you read graphs from left to right. Um, so I'm just going to read this from left to right. Okay, so in order to travel from point L to point M, it looks like I'm going to have to go, there's one, there's two, so I'm going to go down two, and then over one, right? And so we're talking about the vertical change over the horizontal change, so my vertical change is negative two, my horizontal change is one. So it looks like my slope for this line is negative two over one, or it simplifies to negative two, okay? Now, in order to create a square, right, we know that the corners of squares are all 90 degrees. So in order to create a line that is perpendicular, 
to align with this slope of negative 2, we need to create a line with a slope that is the opposite reciprocal to negative 2 over 1. So reciprocals, right, you guys remember, you just flip the fraction around. Okay, and notice how this one here I'm circling is negative, and my other slope is positive. This must be true as well. That's why I call them opposite reciprocals. One value is negative, one slope is negative, and the other is positive. So I'm going to use I'm going to use this slope here to help me draw my square. So let's keep working in pink. So from point M, so I'm starting here, I'm going to go up 1 and over 2. And there's a corner of my square. I'm going to do the same thing from point L. I'm going to go up 1 and over 2. I'm creating the corners of my square, and then I just connect my corners, like so. And there we go. Okay, now, once you've created your square, what you need to do is you need to find the area of the square. Because we've been talking about the relationship between the area of a square to its side length, right? That's how we've been finding the, the sides that we want to find the lengths of. So, the way we do this, I'll do this in black here, we split the square into a bunch of different shapes we know how to find the area of. It looks like this. So I know this has an area of 1. This is a 2 by 1 triangle, so 2 times 1 is 2, and then divide that by 2, so that's also 1. Which means these are also 1. So, <clears throat> It looks like the total area of the pink square, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is uh, 5 square units. Now, to find the side length of the pink square, all you got to do is take the square root. So the side length, Lm, right, is going to be the square root of 5 units long. There we go. Okay. My cat's doing something weird. So square root of 5 units. Awesome. All right. Now, we should be able to take this. We should be able to take this information and, and apply it in a different way. So specifically looking at the perimeter and area of a figure, right? You guys know how to find the lengths of lines you know how to find the areas of irregular figures. So now we're applying both of those skills in one problem. So my advice here is, you know, start off easy. I know that this is one, two, three, four, five units. I know this one here is one, two, three units. There we go. The The, the vertical lines and the horizontal lines are definitely easier to find the lengths of. And now we need to find the length of this red piece here, and then the length of this green piece here. Now, for this method, I'm going to use the right triangle method because, like I said, it is a little bit quicker and it's a little bit more efficient. And it uses your Pythagorean theorem, so why not? So I'm going to create my right triangle. Right, because this is the side that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the length of the hypotenuse. So this side looks like it's like two units and this side is three units. So if I use my Pythagorean theorem, so I know that two squared plus three squared should equal c squared. So that's gonna be four, that's gonna be nine. So c squared is going to be 13. So in order to find uh, c by itself, I know that it's the square root of 13 units. So, I'm going to replace this question mark here. This is the square root of 13. Let's go ahead and find this red piece. I'm going to complete my triangle here. And this red, this red line goes all the way there. I know this is a little weird. Hold on, let me double check this. Yeah, the, those lines are supposed to connect all the way down here. So it's a little bit off. Okay, and so I'm looking for the hypotenuse. I don't know what that is. So this is... Oh goodness, I can't even see. That's only two units. 
So the bottom leg is two units, and this is one, two, three, four, five units. Again, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So two squared plus five squared is equal to c squared. That's four plus 25, which equals 29. So it looks like 29 is equal to c squared. When I take the square root, oops, I don't know what those are. When I take the square root of both sides, I believe c is just the square root of 29. So the length of this figure, or the length of this side is the square root of 29. <clears throat> all right, so we're working for perimeter right now. So let's go ahead and add all of these things together. I have a side length of 5. I have a side length of the square root of 13 units. I have a side length of 3. I have a side length of the square root of 29. Do I have all the sides? One, two, three. Yeah, there's only four sides to this figure. I can definitely add these two. So now I have 8 plus the square root of 13 plus the square root of 29. Now remember, when you guys are adding radicals, the number underneath the radical has to be the same if you want to combine them. If they are not the same, do not combine them, please, okay? So do not, we cannot combine the square root of 13 and the square root of 29. So if we want a really exact answer, then our final answer is going to be 8 plus the square root of 13 plus the square root of 29 units. And this right here is our answer. I know it's strange. For this type of problem, I guess I would ask for the approximation. But I don't know. I mean, I feel like... You guys should also be able to leave your answer this way as well. All right, let's talk about area. So we are trying to split this figure into, let me redraw it. There's two ways to do this. You can either draw the big square around the figure, or you can split the figure into a bunch of smaller figures, which you know how to take the area of. Um, in this case, I feel like, I'm just going to erase some of my work here, that way I don't get confused. So I feel like drawing the big square around this might be a little bit more helpful. So just like that. Okay, and then really all I need to do is make a split there. And then I should be good. 1, 2, 3 by 1, 2, 3, so this is 9. 1, 2 by 1, 2, 3, that's 6, divided by 2 is 3, 2 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5. The area of the entire square, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is uh, 25, and we're going to subtract whatever 9 plus 5 plus 3 is, 9 plus 8 is 17, so we're going to subtract 25 minus 17, so the area is eight square units. So right here, and there we go. Okay, all right, onto the, onto the next question here. So on the dot grid, draw and label a line segment with the lengths square root of five and the square root of nine. So here, uh, we're, we, we kind of have to work backwards here. So I'm going to do my work for question A here. I'm going to draw lines so that way you guys don't get confused. Now, C, my hypotenuse, right, is going to be the square root of 5 units. Now, when I square C, right, when I do the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, I get the square root of 25, which is the same thing as 5. So I need two values, a squared plus b squared, to equal 5. Now remember the trick here. It's, it's going to make your life so much easier if you can remember what perfect squares will add up to 5. If you think about it, 1 plus 4 equals 5, and these are definitely both, this 1 and this 4 are definitely both perfect squares. I can rewrite it like this. 1 squared plus 2 squared is equal to 5. Now, this value is A, this value is B. 
So you know that your short side or your short leg is going to be one, one unit long, and your medium side is going to be two units long. So I'm gonna, uh, let me change colors here. So you're gonna plot your point and you're gonna go one unit across and then you're gonna go two units up. So this segment right here, which I'm connecting with the red line, this right here is a segment that is a square root of five units long. All right. Question B, here we go. The square root of nine units. Hey, what's the square root of nine? Three. Hey, draw, draw a line segment that's three units long. One, two, three. You're done. All right, let's keep going. Which is greater, the square root of five plus the square root of five? or the square root of 25. Well, if I think about this, I know that the square root of five plus the square root of five is two times the square root of five. I know that the square root of 25 is five. You need to think about, well, where is the square root of five? Well, I know that the square root of five, I'm gonna do some work up here. I know the square root of five is in between the square root of four and the square root of nine which is in, so that must mean, whoops, that must mean that the square root of five is in between two or three. If I were to take a guess, I'd probably say, I'd probably say that it's less than, just because I feel like I feel like the square root of five and the square root of four, like they're super close together. But let's see, let's take a look. I'm gonna go to Desmos, and I'm gonna do, let's see, the moment of truth, two times the square root of five. Yes, it's 4.47 approximately. So, two times the square root of five, our final conclusion is going to be less than five. And this here would be part of my explanation, right? Approximating my square root values. And then I would say, I guess I would say as my explanation, the square root of five is closer to the square root of four. It's closer to square root of four. And then I would say the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So I know so I know that 2 times the square root of 5 is closer to 4. OK, let's keep going. Label the dot grid below with letter O so that the length of geo is the square root of 34. So they already plotted one point for us, so we need to use that. We're gonna plot another point on here, but we gotta make sure that the, that the length of the line segment, when we connect the two, is the square root of 34 units long. So, taking a look here, remember this is our hypotenuse. Let me rewrite this. The square root of 34 is equal to C. When we square C, Right, we square the square root of 34, which turns into the square root of 34 times the square root of 34, which just gives us 34. I need two numbers to add up to 34, preferably perfect squares. Think about it for a second. Maybe pause the video, try it on your own. But me, I'm thinking, well, 9 plus 25 gives me 34. And I can rewrite 9 as 3 squared. And I can rewrite 25 as 5 squared. And that gives me 34. And this 3 becomes our A. The 5 becomes our B. So I'm going to go over I'm gonna go over 3. So 1, 2, 3. So there's 3. This is my side A. Then I'm going to go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's my five, so this is side B. And then I connect, I draw my point here. 
Don't forget to label it. This is O. And this right here is the square root of 34 units long. Okay, let's keep going. Find the missing sides. So, using my Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. They tell me what a is, so I'm just going to plug that in. Ooh, they also tell me what b is, so I'm just going to plug that in as well. And then I don't know what c is, so I'm just going to leave it as c squared. So 4 plus 25 is equal to c squared. That's 29. So c squared is equal to 29. you got to take the square root of both sides. So c is the square root of 29. And we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> All right, here I'm missing a squared, so I'm just gonna leave a squared alone. And then they tell me that b squared is two, so I'm gonna square it, and then that should equal four squared. So a squared plus four is equal to 16. Subtract four from both sides. Now I have a squared is equal to 12. I'm gonna work up here. All I gotta do is take the square root of both sides. So a is equal to the square root of 12. Ask yourself, can you simplify? I believe I can. The square root of 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3, which is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is the same thing as 2 times the square root of 3. And so that's my answer. All right, evaluate the square root of 12. Is it a repeating, terminating, or non-repeating decimal? <clears throat> So, well, actually, in this previous problem, we, uh, we simplified the square root of 12 as 2 times the square root of 3. Well, 2 is a whole number, but the square root of 3, we've talked about the square root of 3. What type of number is it? I hope you guys remember that the square root of 3 is what we call an irrational number. And how did we define irrational numbers? Well, irrational numbers are neither, uh, they're non-repeating, they're neither repeating nor terminating, which means they're non-repeating, and they are non-terminating. Because these two things are true about the square root of 3, if you multiply it by 2, these two things are not going to change. So this right here is what we'll call a non-repeating decimal, although I, I feel like we should call it just an irrational number. But anyway, so we'll stick to the we'll stick to the uh, to the terminology they're giving us. Is it repeating? Is it terminating or non-repeating? So we would say this is non-repeating decimal. And with that, there you have it. All right, you guys. I hope you're ready for our test on Friday. Um, Anyway, if you have any other questions, please let me know, and I will see you in the next lesson.